Have you ever thought about how our different identities can overlap to create multiple levels of discrimination? As a queer black lawyer, poet, and civil rights activist, Polly Murray did. Polly's groundbreaking work in championing equality for all helped change America for the better. Born in Baltimore in 1910 and raised by an aunt who struggled to make ends meet, Polly was the only black student in the high school and was denied admission to Columbia and Harvard University because they did not accept women at the time. At a racially integrated women's college in New York, however, Polly thrived. There, Polly attended lectures by key figures of the Harlem Renaissance, like writer Langston Hughes. Polly went on to study law at the historically black school, Howard University, and was the only woman in the class. As a working lawyer who had experienced gender, racial, and economic discrimination firsthand, Polly specifically focused on civil rights law, coining the term Jane Crow, arguing that gender and racial discrimination were separate and different. Polly's work was so impressive, it was later used as a reference for Brown v. Board of Education, the landmark U.S. Supreme Court case that federally desegregated schools. Despite professional success, Polly faced many personal challenges. Struggling with gender identity, Polly extensively researched gender and sexuality and sought the help of doctors and counselors. At times, Polly wore androgynous clothing. Although Polly most often identified and presented as female in public, she often wrote about herself as male in private. The struggles were kept a secret, including the relationship Polly shared with a woman, Irene Barlow. But much of the pain and anguish was expressed in writing and poetry, which many believe is not given the credit it deserves. All the while, Polly remained a devout Christian and in 1977, left law to become the first black woman priest in the Episcopal Church. Polly died in 1985, leaving a legacy that continues to inspire change. Polly's ideas are described as a precursor to the concept of intersectionality, which defines how our multiple identities can overlap to create multiple levels of discrimination. How can we ensure all of our identities are understood and respected in America today?